An important consideration while using a microphone is the way it is held or mounted. A poorly mounted mic can lead to all sorts of problems, whereas a well mounted mic can lift the audio quality significantly. If you are interested in understanding more, keep watching. I'll be back soon after this short break. Good day everyone, my name is Mark Adebayo and you're welcome to this week's episode of Church Sound Production Series, a weekly video tutorial to educate, guide and guide us in the production of sound in our respective place of worship. Are you new to this channel? Have you been inspired, haven't watched some of my tutorials and would like to watch more? Please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button on the screen. Likewise, the notification bell so you can be informed when there is a fresh video. Last week on Church Sound Production Series, we discussed the microphone, an example of an input device on the sound equipment as a component of sound production. Still on microphones, we discussed microphone frequency response. In today's episode of Church Sound Production Series, the microphone part 9, we shall be discussing microphone stands, mounts, clamps and booms. To start with, let us talk about the things to consider when mounting a microphone. The mic obviously needs to be correctly positioned facing the required direction. You should be able to reposition the mic if necessary. The mic must be safe, that is, won't fall over, get knocked, get wet, etc. The mic must be shielded from unwanted noise such as handling noise, vibration, wind, etc. Cable must be secure and safe. In particular, make sure no one can trip over them. There are many ways to mount microphones. Let's look at the most common methods. Microphone stands. The most obvious mount is the microphone stand. There are three main variations. The straight vertical stand, the boom stand, and the small tabletop stand. Boom stands are very useful and versatile. If you are considering buying a general purpose stand, a boom stand is the logical choice. There are some things to watch out for when setting up a microphone stand. Always position the boom to extend directly above the stand. This prevents the stand from tipping over. Don't wrap the cable a hundred times around the stand. This serves no purpose except make life difficult and possibly increase twisting pressure on the cable. One turn around the vertical part of the stand and another turn around the boom is all you need. Never stand on the legs as in the case of a tripod microphone stand. You will wreck them. Never over tighten clamps. Do not tighten them up until they are firm. Don't try to adjust clamp while they are tightened. Undo them first. Next are the clamps. Instead of using a dedicated mic stand, you can use a specialized clamp to piggyback on another stand or any other object. Advantages of using a clamp are less floor space is used, more mics can be squeezed into the same area, less equipment to carry, clamps are smaller and lighter than stands, can sometimes be useful reaching difficult positions. As well, there are disadvantages which are can sometimes be tricky to set up and more difficult to get exactly the right positioning. Also, more difficult to move or adjust once set up. More likelihood of unwanted vibrations, noise creeping into the mix. Clamps are often used in musical situations where there are many stands and many microphones. The classic example is the drum kit which is surrounded by cymbal stands. 
Clamps are well suited to this application. Next on the list is clothing clip, lavalier, lapel or lap mics. They are usually attached to the subject's clothing using a specialized clip. Obviously, the preferred position is on the lapel or thereabout. This provides consistent close range sound pickup and is ideal for interview situations in which each participant has their own mic. It also means that the subject doesn't have to worry about mic techniques. If you have time, strictly hide the cable in the clothing. If there is nowhere to place the mic on the subject's chest, try the collar. Next is the headset. A headset with its own mic works well in situations such as when the person talking needs to listen as well as speak. When the person talking must be able to move around with their hands free. When there is a lot of background noise likely to be distracting the subject. Headsets are ideal for preachers, stage performers, as well as sports commentators, radio announcers, etc. Like Lavalier mics, they provide very consistent audio. Shock absorption in order to minimize unwanted noise caused by vibration of the stand or mount. A shock absorption system may be used. This isolates the mic from the vibration, usually with foam padding or elastic suspension. This is mostly used with condenser microphones. Lastly, let us talk about the boom microphone. The boom microphone is very popular in film and television production. A directional mic is mounted on a boom arm and positioned just out of camera frame as shown on the screen. The cable is wrapped once or twice around the boom arm. Booms have the advantage of freeing up subjects from having to worry about microphones. They can move freely without disturbing the sound and concerns about microphone techniques are eliminated. You can make a simple boom from just about anything which is the right shape. A microphone stand with its leg removed is a good option or even a broomstick or fishing pole. A good boom will have some sort of isolating mechanism for the microphone to prevent vibrations being transferred to the mic. This may involve elastic suspensions, foam padding, etc. The distance between the microphone and the subject must be carefully controlled. The mic must be as close as possible without any chance of getting in frame. You might want to allow a safety margin in case the framing changes unexpectedly. It must also maintain a reasonably consistent distance to avoid fluctuating audio levels. Make sure the boom doesn't cast a shadow on the scene. In the example on the screen, the sound operator is also acting as a guide for the camera operator as they walk backwards, keeping a constant distance from the walking subjects. This is how far we can run on this week's episode of Chuck Sound Production Series. Next week, we shall be discussing handheld microphone in general and how to look after your microphones. Your comments go a long way. I'll be glad to know your opinion vis-a-vis -vis the topics discussed thus far. Furthermore, do you have questions relative to any of the treated topics? Please feel open and unrestricted to drop them in the comment section and I assure you that it shall be treated. Thanks for watching and please be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not. Also, hit the notification bell so you can be notified when there is a fresh video. Equally, like, share and comment. You can as well follow me on other social media handles as shown on the screen. Until I come your way yet again next week on Church Sound Production Series, my name is Mark Adebayo. Bye-bye.